so many places I've seen so many things But none quite as lovely as you Valicia Allen, founder and head of school for Leadership Preparatory Charter School. Leadership Preparatory Charter School prepares K-8 students to excel in high school, graduate from college, and become leaders in their community. So our educational philosophy really hinges on leadership, hence the name Leadership Prep. I believe that our children need to be prepared to be not only local leaders, statewide leaders, and global leaders. So a part of our belief is that on top of academic preparation, you also have the right character. Hence our I lead values, which is integrity, doing the right thing even when no one is watching, leadership, being of service to your community, um, enthusiasm, which is showing excitement for learning, wanting to learn more, um, achievement, which is working hard all day. And then the last one, which is of course the most important, is determination, which is never giving up no matter how hard it is. Um, and so a part of our academic philosophy is not only preparing them with the academic foundation to excel, to excel in life, but with that character foundation, and I think that's really important. So I was a teacher for a couple of years, um, and then I left education and decided to go to law school because I wanted to change the world. Um, and so I thought the best way to do it was through policy. In law school, I realized that there were so many things that affected the African American community, so many things that were near and dear to my heart, so many things as to why it looked the way it looked. And so I decided to explore a lot of the different historical um, things that have hurt our community. So I ended up um, working in poverty law for a while. I worked at a nonprofit law firm doing mortgage foreclosure defense, um, dealing with uh, benefits, dealing with um, policy related to homelessness. The charge for the grant was basically anything that affected homelessness, I could go after and fight. And so that's what I did. I then left there because I realized that I needed to know more about um, the criminal justice system. So for the past six years, I worked as a public defender at Charlotte uh, Mecklenburg Public Defender's Office. And it was there that I realized no matter what my clients looked like, whether they were black, purple, or green, if they were my client and they were young, they had three things in common. One, they couldn't read. So they couldn't even read the charges against them. Two, they had poor numeracy skills. They couldn't even fathom what 72 months meant to their life. But the thing that was most disheartening is that they had a sense of hopelessness that started well before they became incarcerated. In many instances, it started with their grandmother or their grandfather, was passed down to their mother, and then to them. And so I realized in order to make my dash on this earth mean something from birth to death, I needed to get back in my community and work with the young people. Um, to teach them that there was something different. I am a first generation college graduate. I'm only a second generation high school graduate. So my grandparents didn't even graduate from high school. So I'm proof that education can really change the trajectory of your life and can make a difference. Um, I like to think because of me, all of my siblings except for one, we're praying for her, have graduated from college. We have one that's going. Um, and so you can change the history or the trajectory of your family. So that's why I decided to move back into education because it really was a calling and it's the only thing that, that made me feel good, honestly. And so when I left law, everyone was like, what are you doing? But um, this is tiring. It's painful at times, but it, it, in the end, it, it really is a calling, I think, for me. Our mission, of course, as I said before, is to prepare them to excel in, in high school, graduate from college, and lead in their community. So my major goal is to produce um, citizens that are going to shake this earth, that are going to shake this city, that are going to um, show what's possible when you combine academic excellence with character development. Um, so my goal is that I create um, little people that are going to turn into adults that come back to this city and start businesses, run for office, um, and just really go off into this world and, and show you know what, what Memphis is about. So we're starting with kindergarten and first grade and we're growing one grade a year. 
So in five years, I guess we'll have we'll have fifth graders. So my goal is that at each grade level, they are not only reading on grade level, they are also involved in civic things throughout the community. Um, I believe that we can, like a fifth grader can say, hey, there's trash on my street and we can, they can think about creative ways to try to clean up the street, whether it be raising money for garbage cans or whether it be starting a let's keep our streets. My goal is to create leaders. That That is my goal. And so if our children um, in five years are reading on grade level, able to do math on grade level, also are and thinking critically about their community and how they can be of service to it and, and how they can be a leader in it, then I've accomplished my goal for leadership prep. Um, I can't do it alone. Of course, I, I'll have excellent teachers and excellent staff, and, um, but that's our ultimate goal. We believe that parents are our partners, number one. And so I can't speak to what other charter schools are doing. I can't speak to what we're doing. So we believe that parents are our partners, and as such, we'll call home every other week, whether it's to say, hey, Tina is doing great on her side words, we're actually gonna send some more side words home, mom. Or whether it's to say, hey mom, it's six months in, Tina knows 20% of her sight words, this is not going to work, what can we do to help you help Tina? We wanna recognize that our parents are possibly dealing with some issues, um, sustainability of housing issues, food shortage issues, letting them know so that their that mom can say, hey look, we've been staying in the hotel for the last month, I haven't really been able to help Tina with her sight words. So then we know we have to fill in the gap. So unfortunately, instead of peace, instead of recess, Tina might have to play a fun game with sight words. Or Tina might stay after school with a teacher who might be willing to step up and help her with her sight words. Um, so that's one thing that we're doing different is not just saying that we're partners with our parents, but actually going the extra mile. We also do a lot of small group reading instruction, which I think is important to help um, with babies that may learn differently. Um, so that's how we'll be, that's how we'll function. I can't necessarily speak to how other schools are functioning. Gotcha. So going back to excellence looks like our students are in class engaged. Our teachers are happy to be there. Um, uh, it's clean. I think babies need a clean, bright, beautiful space to walk into. Um, our parents are on board, our parents feel like they're being valued, we're, you know, pulling them along with us as we pull their babies along to push for excellence. Um, it looks like all of our students reading on grade level, being able to do math on grade level, and again, being able to really articulate and think critically about the city of Memphis and their hopes for it and their dreams for it and, and ways to make it better.